Most gracious day to you my dear friends and welcome to my tutorial, Gravehammer here. Today's tutorial is about weathered metallics and a red OSL done in a very effective yet fast and easy to replicate way. This tutorial aims to give some tools to how to wet blend certain effects and these effects are demonstrated on the upper torso platform of the Necron Doomstalker, but I'm not limited to just this specific model. Yet again we start the work by priming the miniature black with Vallejo Black Primer and after letting the primer dry properly we hit the model with Vallejo Burnt Iron. This metallic base paint gives the model a very dark cast iron look and we want to set the initial tone dark to allow the weather effects and OSL to really shine. We finished a cast iron look with beat up old hobby brush and stippled the burned iron all around the model. More in a, like a dapping and stippling motion than actual dry brushing. We want the metallics to look very irrational and erratic, uh, much like random patterns rather than a clean layer. You can see me struggling here with the armor blade as I just had used a blue tack to attach them and even then they did not stay on too well. I don't recommend you glue them on, but it's not a horrible sin if you have the model already assembled. Here is a uh, close up on the armor blading and how the stippling effects work. Uh, it's almost like the surface has been damaged and some parts are more oxidized than others. You continue the same stippling and dapping with uh, Vallejo aluminium. Uh, it is very important in this step to only have a minuscule amount of the paint on the brush as the metallics we did earlier were really dark and the aluminium is extremely bright. That is also its purpose, uh, to bring out the iron effect much more vibrant and alive. Go around the whole model and uh, stipple the on raised surfaces and on places you would think the reflections hit the model most. Try again to achieve more of an erratic and random pattern than a very clean execution. It wouldn't be my tutorial now would it if we didn't use a bit of the Rune Lord brass. Stipple some of, uh, some of it on the weapon blading and some random surfaces. It really doesn't matter too much as the idea here is to just have slight variation to the metallics. The basic metallic layers have been done and now we get to the washes and wet blending. Start off by applying Streaking Grime from MIG and uh, don't be stingy about it. We want uh, pretty heavy layers brushed on with a dedicated grime brush. Uh, remember this is an enamel paint and we need white spirits or odorless turpentine to clean up the model. Um, we let the model dry for about 30 minutes or use a blow dryer, but it's not required to be completely or even mostly dry. Using odorless turpentine I gently brush over the metallic parts as shown. The turpentine or white spirits reactivates the enamel and it almost looks like it's melting away. Every time I take the brush away from the screen I wipe it on a tissue and pick up some uh, white spirits and continue working the model. Idea here is to let the enamel kind of like slide into crevices and recesses, melting downwards by gravity and surface tension. Do not remove all of the streaking crime away, but peel it off slightly with the brush as we work the model. Here you can see me working on the other side and the same rules apply. I wanted to leave this portion a bit longer as the cleanup process is something I get asked quite frequent, frequently. Oh, 
English is hard again today. Try not to be too violent with the brush and uh, you can always apply a thin layer of varnish before we start with the washers and the streaking grime. While the model is still wet from the previous round of white spirits, we use Abteilung 502 black oil paint diluted to a wash and dab it slightly over some crevices. If you add too much of the wash, you can use a damp brush to remove some or all of it or use a damp Q-tip. Load the brush with the wash and uh, with a finger pull the bristles back and release so the oil sprinkles over the model and creates a spotty pattern. Not letting the model dry, come over the metallic parts with AK Interactive Medium Rust Deposits. Tap some of the effects lightly on the armor plating and notice how the paint dissolves into the surface. This will create a very random concentrations of the effect, uh, creating some very unique patterns you can push around and focus to your liking. If you feel you put on too much of the effect, you can simply try your brush and pick it up and reapply as you wish. Once you feel there is enough, let the model dry fully before we continue to the next step. I recommend leaving the model in front of a, uh, for example, low powered fan or some such, as if you use a blow dryer at this point, it might be too much and push the effects of the surface into recesses. Alright, we let the model dry and so far it looks pretty damn neat. Some random patterns, nice heavy cast iron look and some concentrated rusting. Now pick up a more soft bristle dry brush and load it gently with Vallejo aluminium. I am using a Artis Opus D series brush, but for example a soft makeup brush works just as well. Go over raised surfaces with quick brushing motion as this will create an effect of kind of like the metallics have been brushed against something. A bit like a streaking effect so to speak. Well, we want this highlight to be subtle, uh, but also give some much needed detailing for the model. Dab and brush gently over the metallics. Do not think too much as the idea is to have a random, almost a chaotic pattern for the effects. Let your own intuition guide over the details. Let the grim dark flow through you like the warp that manifests. Oh, I think you get the point. And with this the metallics are done for and we move to the red OSL effects. Alright, load your airbrush with white ink and concentrate some on the orbs on the side, uh, the small gauss flares on the front and also on the cannon and the small optical lens in the front. Instead of uh, the more common theme, we are applying the big cannon effect uh, on the smaller crevices. Uh, this will create a nice and focused OSL effect. And next up, uh, go over the ingot areas with Vallejo red ink. 
This is a very transparent paint, so uh, to get the most out of it, uh, we have to go over the areas multiple times. I usually use uh, three passes with the airbrush, and that will be more than enough to give you a rich red layer. Once again, we do a one more white ink pass with the airbrush. Uh, this time use it much more sparingly and focus on the middle of the supposed glow effect. Do a very thin down mix of whatever white paint you have at hand and apply some to the big cannon and the recesses of the gauss plaster or flare or whatever these small barrels are. Uh, for the love of Omnissaya, try to be neater than I am. I make a huge mess demonstrating this on the camera. Load your brush with Vallejo fluorescent red and start working layers on the small gauss weapons. Again, try to be neat, but it's not a golden demon competition, so let's work what we have here. Add some of the fluo red on the big cannon also. Don't worry too much about oversplashing, uh, as it will just work to emphasize the effect. Finally, airbrush the fluo red over the bigger globes. I recommend you do this in a couple of passes rather than one thick layer to build up the glow. Uh, let the airbrushing spray over the metallic surrounding the globe too. Repeat the same process on the other side also. For the big cannon, add a tiny amount of the earlier tint down white as a hot spots. And that's it. You are free to add any details you might want to, for example have a slight OSL on the very end of the cannon, or work the metallics and tubes more. You can also combine this with my swamp based tutorial found on my channel. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial as much as I enjoyed making it. Hit that like and subscribe for more future content and if you want to see what I'm working on go check on my Instagram at grave.hammer or follow my Facebook at gravehammerminches. Happy wargaming, have fun hobbying and as always stay grim dark.